The following is a clip from the David Land podcast. You can listen live here on YouTube at Mondays at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, or you can listen anytime on your favorite podcasting platforms. IndyCar is testing at Thermal in Palm Springs, California. The Thermal Club. Uh, it's it's not doesn't seem to be particularly popular with the fan base on the internet. I'll just say that um, it it appears to be being memed to death right now, um, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, I have actually gone out to the Thermal Club. I'm not out there this time. Really, it came down to. It was too close to the Rolex. You have to look at it from my perspective of, you know, I don't have a multi-million dollar uh, media conglomerate behind me. I have to pick and choose my battles. And right after the Rolex, it's tough to say, okay, I'm going to drop another thousand plus dollars to go out to California, uh, you know, right after Rolex and to see cars and drivers that I've either already seen at Daytona or have been seeing and shown you guys for the past couple of years. And also you kind of go way. Okay. If I'm going to take a California trip in the first half of the year, do I want to go to the thermal club for a two day private test that isn't being streamed? They're not testing a new car. Or do I at least want to get out to long beach, which is a crown jewel race in the series. It's an IMSA crossover event. So I get to see and cover those cars too. It, it just made too much sense to essentially say, I'm going to go to Long Beach. I'm not going to go to Thermal, which is unfortunate because I did enjoy my time going out to Thermal. And hopefully I'll be able to give some perspective that maybe uh, some of the people who haven't been there, like such as you, Kyle, would, you know, maybe I'll be able to answer some questions about it. Because I think there's two sides to the Thermal Club debate. And I want to make sure that we're being fair when we talk about it, because I do think there is... There is a good, there's good intentions behind why IndyCar has decided to move their preseason test out to thermal. I just think it's a bit of a misfire. But Kyle, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this first, because I think you're going to have a different perspective than I am. Yeah, obviously, because I I've never been to thermal, um, but you know I have been an IndyCar fan for a number of years, and I've seen the preseason testing at a number of different different venues. Um, my first thought, especially on it not being brought like streamed, is it, it kind of makes sense uh, when you look at it, because of course a lot of people want it. When you think about, you know, how much how much do you think it would cost to stream there versus how many people are going to be viewing? Um, that makes sense. I mean that it, it makes sense. Now, having preseason testing at a track that you can't invite spectators to, that's a that's a miss. Um, I enjoy like tracks that come to my mind, especially at this time of year, like Phoenix. I mean, even if we tested at Phoenix, maybe we could see if we could race there again. You know, and I, and they and they have every capability of streaming that. Yes, because they did it can, already. Yeah, they can't and, say they can't do it at Phoenix because Phoenix, they've literally done it already. Phoenix, you put a, a cam one camera on the roof, and that's all you need. Like, yep. it's that easy. You don't need to go in depth for a. a for testing coverage at Phoenix. Um, and then it also comes, what just came to my mind, if we were to test at a place like Phoenix, David, which IndyCar package do you think needs the most work race-wise? Which Short oval. Short oval, exactly. So we're we're killing so many birds with, with one stone here if we just go to a short oval for preseason testing. Um, there aren't many of those left, and there I aren't many it, in warm climates. <laughs> That's I think the only about problem. Sonoma, I think about you know, a few, there's a few tracks that I think that we could uh, we could be doing preseason testing. Well, at I'll, I'll give you my suggestion. I'll literally give you my suggestion right now, and then we'll get back to thermal. Okay. But and I and you actually have, and I don't know if you'll be able to say it, but I think you have some information that you could share with people. But you you'll have to tell me if you can or cannot share it. But I, I'll just say it like where they should be is Homestead, Miami. Like do it right after the Rolex. Everybody's in town already. Uh, the teams have to drive less distance. Uh, you clearly have camera positions and the infrastructure to stream it. And you have the added bonus of not only it's an oval, you could do one day on the oval. And yeah. hey, guess what? 
Homestead has a road course. Do a day on the road course. And what's yeah, funny, yeah, is Indy Indy next just tested there. Yep. They just yep. tested there. They didn't test yep. in the oval, of course, because they don't need to. But uh, <laughs> they they just tested there, so it would have been perfect timing. You have in, the Indian next test, the Rolex, and then an IndyCar test. Guess what? If you're spending a week in Florida, if you're in Florida after the Rolex, you need to, you, somehow 24 hours of sports car racing wasn't enough for you. Go down to Homestead and watch some IndyCar. Um, like the IndyCar tests are fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, like. They tested here at Mid Ohio before, where they have told the fit, like told people, just show up. It'll be free. Just show up and come watch. And those are some of the most fun days to be at. So it, and it seems like lately in the last few years they've cut down on that. And I think part of it is the teams wanting it to be private. They want to test in private so they can get all their, you know, gremlins and, and things in order. Um, because like I said, that mid Ohio test that I went to in 2016, the next year in 17 was closed. So it, it's been a thing over the last few years where testing has been kind of closed off to the public. Um, and there have been times where it's been broadcasted, of course, but I think testing at a place where fans can't show up and then on top of it, not being broadcast, that's, it's a miss, but it's nothing against thermal. I think thermal is honestly a good track for IndyCar to be testing at um, just track wise, probably, you know, it probably helps gets a lot of good data for the teams to work off of. I, it's a good test track just from a marketing standpoint, from, from the fans viewpoint, it's just, it, it, it is a total miss. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why it's a misfire because I think I, I'll put it this way. I, I, I think, I don't know if IndyCar necessarily, I know they, pay attention to what we say and what we talk about here. I don't know if they necessarily actually listen to it, but I I remember specifically that I said um, after a a Sebring test test that I attended last year, I said something to the effect of if you're going to only test for like two or three days in the off season, you should bring everybody together, all the teams at once and make it a big event. It's cheaper for the teams to do it that way too. If you get them all together. Absolutely. Um, but but you also want to have like and IndyCar has kind of done this. They put the content day with it. They went to a track that seems to want them. The problem is that thermal isn't exactly the right track to do because what IndyCar the reason this is a misfire is IndyCar is trying to do two different things at once. They are trying to. They're trying to appeal to the crowd of folks who are club members at Thermal. And at the same time, they're also trying to put together some sort of a media spectacular where, oh, fans are supposed to get really excited about the next IndyCar season. But the problem is that I think you can't do those two things at once. The Thermal Club is is almost like Mayberry of auto racing. It, It is truly... You know, it is like going to Disney World, but it's cars. They have a racetrack. They have a go-kart track. They have like two or three different restaurants on the property. They have a gas station. They have an ice cream machine. They have all these things that are just wonderful to experience. And I'm very blessed that I got to experience these things, not being a member of that club. But I can see what the appeal is to IndyCar. There are literal billionaires who are living at the thermal club their backyard is the racetrack so in indycar's mind they're thinking hey we're going to bring our teams our cars our series out to this racetrack and hey we're going to put on a big show and maybe some of these billionaires who are already clearly interested in race cars and racetracks maybe they'll want to join up with our series and do something i think that it's 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 a it's an idea. I don't think it's a bad idea because you're going to people who have a lot of money, the kind of money that IndyCar needs, and you're trying to appeal to those people to get involved. The problem is when you make that the preseason test, and really this is the first time that the Thermal Club is really seeing IndyCars in anger, is just the entire paddock showing up in these guys' backyard and just suddenly being there and 
allowing them to not use the racetrack. I wonder if that's going to have the effect that IndyCar maybe wants it to have on those billionaires. And on the other hand, you have all of the fans who are clearly, I've looked, I've seen the social media. The fans are not happy about this. The coverage has been, and, and you know, the coverage is going to be what the coverage is going to be. Like I saw, I saw the defense force out, you know, talking about, oh, well, it's, you know, X, Y, Z reasons why it couldn't be streamed. It, it, the reason it couldn't be streamed is because you'd have to literally set up camera positions in folks' backyards, and they yeah. probably couldn't get enough permission to set up the right camera positions to, to, to do it. So they couldn't do it, which is, which makes a lot of sense. But why would you have a preseason test at a track that you can't film properly? I think if you go out to the thermal club with five or six different cars and you put on a show for the billionaires and you make a five to six minute video for YouTube of the fans or for the fans, that's a very different thing than saying, okay, Hey, our preseason scrimmage is going to take place at this private test track in California. And we're going to bring all the teams out across the country to this thing where the billion, I, and, and I would be very curious. And that's the one thing that I'm disappointed that I'm not there because I'd be very interested to see if I see some of the faces that I saw there in November, because there were a lot of members just milling around, you know, hanging out, talking to each other. I wonder if the people who live there, didn't decide to go to, you know, go skiing or something when they found out that they couldn't use their test track. <laughs> you know, I think that's kind of what I'm worried about from this whole thing. And it, and if you didn't appeal to the billionaires, what, what was the point? Who of are you appealing there? to? Who, what exactly. are you doing? Exactly. That's, that's what I'm worried about from this. I feel point. like if that was the, uh, if that's the plan here is to test in front of all these billionaires, then, I mean, you're right. The, the perfect point was, you could have you could do literally the same thing with five cars. You didn't have to bring the whole field out and make this the preseason test because, I mean, the preseason test could literally be huge yep. if done right. Mm -hmm. It could literally be huge. It could even grow into something like, you know, the clash for NASCAR. It could be a preseason scrimmage, as you said. It could be huge. Well, I think. Well, here's the thing is that. That, I believe, was the initial idea. It's been said a couple of times, and when I went out there, I heard a couple of different people who are very credible say to me, you know, we're looking at doing, we want to do a race here. And I'm like, okay, how, how do you do a race behind closed doors? And my thought initially, and this, and I had no inside information on this. My, my thought was just like, do an all-star race put the 10 fastest or the 10 highest cars in points out on the racetrack and, you know, put up a million dollars and, and put on a show. If you're going to go out there and try to show off what you guys are all about, you know, put on a show, stream it. And then that might appeal not only to those billionaires, but also appeal to the average Joe fan and give them something to watch. The problem ended up being that IndyCar was unable to stream it, and therefore, you really can't put on any kind of an event outside of just a test. So the whole thing is just kind of like not I, – I don't think this will continue past this year. I'll put it that way. I, I, I just don't see – unless there's something that really dramatically changes because of them going here, if they find a new Dan Towerus or if they find a new uh, Zach Brown – you know, you know what I mean? Like that would be yeah. the only the only thing that I think would bring them back there next year. Because I just I don't see what the longevity is of going to thermal for preseason testing. I think you're right. I think it's just and you're right too that I think you have to if you're gonna limit preseason testing this much, and and the reason they're limiting it so much is because the cars are 10 years old. So if you're gonna limit it this much. You might as well make those two days as impactful as humanly possible for the sport. And not being open to fans, not really being in an accessible part of the country, that makes it very difficult. Uh, it makes it a very difficult sell for me from, from just the perspective of like, I'm, 
looking at like a cost benefit analysis of going out there and I'm saying, okay, unless Foyt like lands a huge sponsor out of this, like what was accomplished? 